Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Johnson back again. I have Paul's letter to the Ephesians again, and we have a new part to read today. We've been doing the special things that God gave us, the special blessings. Remember, number one, we were adopted. Number two, we were forgiven. Number three, God has a secret that Jesus will be in charge of everything and everybody someday. We didn't have a lesson on that, but that's one of them. And then last week, sealed by the Holy Spirit, sealed in love, so that we know beyond anything that we are God's children if we love Jesus and that we can go to heaven with him when it's time. So I'm going to undo our letter here, take the tie off, the little string, and then I will open it up and we'll read you the new part. And this is, remember, this is Paul talking to his friends. I'm going to say the words, but it's as if Paul was talking. Ever since I heard that you love Jesus and that you also love other Christians, I thank God for you every time I talk to him about you. I ask him to make you wise and to show you how to know him better. Wow. God wants us to be wise, boys and girls. He wants us to know who he is. He wants us to know him better, just the way we would get to know a good friend. And today we're going to talk a little bit about somebody who was wise. Being wise means that you know how to say or do the right thing. You know how to make right choices, wise choices, good choices. You know what to do so that we can live for God. Our story today is about a young girl who is going to be very wise in the story. She's only going to show in one of the pictures. Uh, the rest of them will all be about someone else. But her, her being wise and her knowing what to say at the right time is going to be what makes this story a very, very good story. So let's go over to the pictures. Our story starts today, boys and girls, with this picture of a soldier in the red shirt named Naaman, right here he is. You can see his soldier's helmet on his head to keep his head safe, to protect him from maybe arrows coming at him or spears or swords. Helmets were metal coverings that a lot of the soldiers wore back in Bible times to protect their heads. Naaman is in charge of the army in the land of Aram. He is a very important person there. He's the leader of the army. He's a very brave man. He's a strong man, so he's been a good fighter. He's been considered to be a very, very good soldier in their country. But Naaman has a problem. Can you guess what it is? Look very closely at Naaman's skin. Yes. You see these spots here on his arms, on his hand, the other arm, even up on his face. Those spots are a skin sickness called leprosy. Leprosy was something that people were very, very afraid of in Bible times. People were afraid that it was catching. Oh, you can't be near me because I might catch it from you and I don't want it. A lot of times when people had leprosy, they were told to get out of their house by the rest of their family. They were told to get out of their town or their city by their neighbors and the other people in their city. Nobody wanted to get leprosy because there was no way to heal it. No pills would fix it. No lotions or other medicines. You couldn't rub a cream on it and make it go away. It was a very, very bad thing to have. And one of the hardest parts about having it was because nobody wanted to be near you. Now, Naaman doesn't want to leave his house. He doesn't want to leave his city. He certainly doesn't want to leave his army job, being a soldier. But what is he going to do? The other soldiers won't want to get it. The king that he works for won't want, to, won't want to get it either. And his family won't want to get it. People are very sad because they like Naaman. 
and they don't know what to do. But remember I told you that there was a child in this story who would know what to do? She would know the wise thing to say and do? This girl right here was a girl from Israel. She had been taken from her family years ago and brought here to this land of Aram. And she was working for this lady right here. This lady happens to be Naaman's wife. Remember Naaman the soldier? This is his wife right here. She is worried. She doesn't want her husband to have this terrible sickness. She doesn't want to have to make him leave their house. But the young girl is very wise. I told you she came from the land of Israel. Her family knew and believed and worshipped the one true God, the God that King David would have worshipped, the God that Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would have worshipped. She believed this God, and she knew how strong and powerful he was, and she knew that he cared about people. He was a personal God. And she said to her, the girl says to her mistress, the lady, Aram's wife, why doesn't Naaman go to Israel, down to where Elisha, God's special prophet, lives? Elisha will know what to do to help him get rid of his leprosy. Oh, what wonderful news. Naaman's wife tells Naaman, and he, uh, he tells the king, there is a man in Israel who can help me. So Naaman travels down to the land of Israel. And when he gets close to Elisha's house, Elisha sends a helper, a messenger out. And says, he says to Naaman, My master, the prophet, says you should go down to the river and wash in the river. And then you will be, you will be healed. Well, Naaman hadn't expected that. He thought he was going to have to do something very hard, but this is sounding pretty easy. Go and wash in the river. But he doesn't know why he had to come all the way to Israel, because they had rivers in Aram. He thought, I could have washed in the river up there. But his soldiers tell him, you were ready to do something very hard if the prophet told you that. Go and wash in the river and see what happens. So Naaman washes in the river. Elisha had told him he had to wash seven times. So he dips under the water, comes up, still has the leprosy spots. He goes under again for a second time, two times, still spots. He goes under again and comes up the third time, still spots. And he does it four times, five times, and I only, I don't have enough fingers to do this. Six times, Naaman goes underneath the water. But when he comes up the sixth time, he still has the spots. And I imagine he's beginning to think, ah, oh, really? I'm washing and washing and washing and nothing looks any different. But he remembers that Elisha's helper told him, wash seven times. So he goes under the water for the last time. And when he comes up, look, his face, his arms, his chest, his tummy, his hands, everything is clean. Remember how he looked before? Oh, all those white sick spots on his skin. Now he comes up clean. His skin looks healthy and young again. Oh, how wonderful is that? How wonderful. Naaman gets out of the water and goes back to Elisha's house. 
And now this time we have Elisha's helper and Elisha himself coming. And Naaman says, thank you, thank you. Now I know that there is a God who is strong enough to do this. He brings some presents, some nice silver dishes that he wants to give to Elisha. But Elisha says, oh no, no, the God that I serve, he is the one who healed you. I don't need any presents to thank me. Thank him. And Naaman says, I will worship your one true God from now on because I know that he is the powerful God. Well, that was quite a story, boys and girls. Can you imagine being able to just go wash in the river seven times and take away your sickness? We can't do that for the things that we have. That's not how it works all the time. But just imagine, too, what if that little girl, that young girl, we don't know how old she was. We just know that she was young. She was not a grown-up at all. What if she had not been working there at Naaman and his wife's house? Who would have told them to go to the prophet? The king wouldn't have told them because he didn't know the one true God. The soldiers that Naaman worked with liked him very much. He was their leader. They respected him and honored him very, very much. They liked him, but they couldn't tell him about the prophet because they didn't know the true God either. They didn't know about the true God having a prophet back in Israel. Naaman's wife didn't know. She loved him more than any of the other people. She was his wife. But she couldn't tell him to go to the prophet because she didn't know about the one true God either. But that young girl knew. And she didn't keep it a secret, did she? She didn't look around and say to herself, I know the prophet can help him, but I'm not going to tell him. She didn't do that, did she, boys and girls? No, she was wise. She knew in her head that the one true God was strong enough to take care of Naaman's leprosy. And not only was she smart to know that, she was wise to know to say it and the right time to say it. And that made all the difference in the world because up until she said that, nobody there in the house would have known anything about the true God and his helper, the prophet Elisha, and the, how they could help Naaman with his leprosy. What a wise young girl she was. And it's proof, too, that we don't have to be grown-ups just to do things for God. She was quite young, but she knew. She knew who was strong enough to help Naaman. Naaman just had to decide to do it, and he did. And it was wonderful for him. Let's go to our Bible words now. Here's our poster with the Bible words. Let's say them together line by line, and then we'll try to put it all together as one verse. All right, are you ready? In love, he chose us to be adopted as his children through Jesus. And that's in the book of Ephesians 1, 5. All right, let's try to do the first three lines together, okay? In love, he chose us to be adopted. Can you do that with me? In love, he chose us to be adopted as his children through Jesus. Let's do that part again. As his children through Jesus. Now, can we put it all together? Let's try together, all right? In love, he chose us to be adopted as his children through Jesus. Oh, that was pretty good, boys and girls. Let's try that again. In love, he chose us to be adopted as his children through Jesus. 
Ephesians 1, 5. Very good. And remember when I read Paul's letter to us? Do you remember the parts, the special things that God gave us, the special things, the blessings that he gave us? Number one, he chose us to be adopted. Number two, we were forgiven. Remember Paul, who didn't like Jesus and was happy to have people hurt who did? And then Jesus met him. And then Paul changed. Jesus forgave Paul. Paul was sorry. Jesus forgave him. And now Paul works for Jesus. He's not the person who doesn't like Jesus anymore. He worked for Jesus in this story. Remember he when he told people that Jesus was the one that God sent. Jesus was the one they needed to believe. And then we are sealed with his spirit, sealed in love. Remember I told you the story of Jesus with the children and how he loved to be with them and hug them and how the children were happy to be with him and how the parents were happy to have their children be with Jesus. What happy faces. They know Jesus loves their children. The children know Jesus loves them. And they didn't forget it after that day. They remembered. They were sealed in his love. And then today we have Naaman with his sick skin, not knowing what to do. And we have the young Hebrew girl who knows the true God and knows that he is the answer to Naaman's problems. So let's look at those special things again. We are adopted into his family. We are forgiven the wrong things we do. And then we know we can go to heaven to be with him. We are sealed in his love, sealed by his Holy Spirit, so that we know that. We know in our heads that we're loved. And we feel it down inside, too, when it's real. And then he makes us wise to know how to help other people. Just like this young girl helped Naaman. She was wise. She knew what to say and when to say it. The right thing to say. All right. I think it's time for our song. If I love Jesus, I am chosen by God. If I love Jesus, I'm forgiven by God. If I love Jesus, I am sealed with his love. I'm adopted into his family. Jesus died to take away my sin. He rose again and he wants to be my friend. He makes me wise so I can live for him. I'm adopted into his family. Okay, now we'll bring the camera a little bit closer so you can see my mouth while I'm singing. <laughs> if I love Jesus, I am chosen by God. If I love Jesus, I'm forgiven by God. If I love Jesus, I am sealed with his love. I'm adopted into his family. Jesus died to take away my sin. He rose again and he wants to be my friend. He makes me wise so I can live for him. I'm adopted into his family. All right, now I'll sing it for a third time, and this time I'll add some clapping to it. So we'll need to get the camera where we can see my hands clapping. You can get your hands ready too if you want. If I love Jesus, I am chosen by God. If I love Jesus, I'm forgiven by God. If I love Jesus, I'm sealed with his love. I'm adopted into his family. Jesus died to take away my sin. 
He rose again and he wants to be my friend. He makes me wise so I can live for him. I'm adopted into his family. Very nice, boys and girls. I'll sing it each week and you can join me whenever you feel like it. Bye-bye.